Do you need errors and emissions insurance, general liability, drone insurance, or even cyber liability coverage? Then let me tell you about our sponsor, Claim Professionals, a liability insurance company, or CPLIC. Founded 16 years ago by independent adjusters for independent adjusters, CPLIC offers products to give you peace of mind while you help your insureds. Apply for coverage now at cplic.net and let them know that Adjuster TV sent you. In this video, Kylie from Titan Restoration is here to tell us why her company uses the Matterport system and gives us a full demonstration. Starting now. You're watching the Property IA Show. Hey, it's Matt here with the Property IA Show on Adjuster TV and for the best tips and tools for getting on the first call list as an independent adjuster, subscribe to Adjuster TV here on YouTube. Click on the bell notification so that you never miss a video. Adjuster TV is the premier video resource for the independent adjusting community and we are committed to bringing you the best, most up-to-date and entertaining programming to help you learn what adjusting is all about, if it's right for you, and then how to build a rewarding career in claims. A career where you can help people in their time of crisis and earn a great living. I wanna tell you about our sponsor, the IA firm CCMS and Associates. CCMS and Associates dedicates their management team to training and developing a talented adjusting team. That's you and me. As a full service independent insurance adjusting company, CCMS and Associates specializes in every part of the claim service cycle, including day-to-day -day property claims, casualty claims, complex claims, and residential and commercial losses. Strategic process, measured results, CCMS and Associates. They are currently looking for adjusters who are interested in deploying for TWIA, AKA Texas Windstorm Insurance Association events. For more information and to join their roster, send an email over to careers at ccmsclaims.com or visit ccmsclaims.com slash work with us. Hi, my name is Kylie Kempton. I am a Matterport technician for Titan Restoration in Mesa, Arizona. Titan Restoration is a restoration company based out of Mesa, Arizona, and we specialize in fire, flood, mold, asbestos, any other type of disaster restoration. Our brand promise is speed, simplicity, and quality. So Titan Restoration started looking into the possibility of using the Matterport camera when we were running into the problem of estimating. How do we make it the process faster. So we decided to start using the Matterport camera as part of a revamped estimating process. Now we have what is called Blue Desk in place and Blue stands for Backline Unseen Estimator. So basically what I do as a Matterport technician, I go into someone's house when they've had a disaster situation, do the initial inspection in place of the estimator, use the Matterport camera to take a 3D scan of all the affected areas, and then take that information back to our uh, backline unseen estimator. So basically he takes the information that I gather and puts that into an estimate and sends that off to the adjuster for approval. So from when we started, um, with our normal estimating process where the estimator would go out, do the initial inspection, gather all of the information, take photos, come back to the office, write the, the estimate and get that off to the insurance company. It was quite a lengthy process. It took longer than it probably should. So when we started using the Matterport camera, that enabled us to narrow it down to an tur estimate turnaround time of about 48 hours. So between me going to the loss in the first 24 hours of when we receive the job to when we can get that estimate back to the adjuster, our goal is 48 hours. The Matterport system is definitely helping with our profitability as far as the whole department goes. Number one, it is faster, which saves time and money, because uh, time is money when it comes to estimating, of course. And then um, on the other end is documentation. Rather than having to look through 700 photos, try to find the right pieces, the right parts that go for each room, if you maybe didn't get a photo of something when you're initially on site, and now you have to schedule to go back out to take more photos. Um, the benefit of the Matterport camera is that it captures all of that information where you can go revisit it in a virtual sense and get all that information and look over all of that information again without having to worry about missing information somewhere. If a, if a Matterport scan is done the correct way and done in such a way that it's um, the position of the camera is right 
and uh, the Matterport technician is savvy in uh, obtaining all the information that the estimator will need to write that estimate, then it's far more accurate in the long run than just taking photos while you're on site. So the Matterport software is also very user friendly. So uh, between the process of taking the scan and then also on the back end or the user end, they have a lot of options available for um, either taking screenshots of inside the scan. So if, say you did need a photo of a particular area, then you can get that off of the what's called workshop in the Matterport software off of the Matterport website. So you can take screenshots, you can um, add 360 photos if you just wanted a still photo of the area. You can add measurements to the area. They have a tool now where the viewer, whoever you send it to, can also add measurements onto the scan. Um, it helps in if you wanted to send it to a subcontractor, then they are able to view that scan and also use that measuring tool on the back end, or excuse me, on the front end, so that they can take measurements of an area without having to even go on site to take measurements or to give a quote for work. We have had uh, homeowners that experience a loss. They, we are starting to get it repaired and then they have another loss on top of that. So we go back to reference maybe the first scan that we did to talk about maybe some um, property that was not damaged before but is now damaged. We do have water technicians in our company as well in our water department that each have a camera on their truck. So when they go to a new loss, the objective is to get a pre-scan, meaning before any mitigation is started, then an after or post scan for after any demolition has been performed, any materials have been removed, so that we can send both of those to the adjuster and they can easily look at the before and the after scan and it makes it really easy to tell the difference between what's been removed, what needs to be repaired, and the scope of loss. When we go out to take a Matterport scan and we're sending that to the adjuster, first of all, we've had rave reviews from adjusters all over the country about how easy it is to use when you receive the scan, how easy it is to access, all of the user-friendly benefits of Matterport, but also on how clear the scan is, how concise the information is. Um, they can be sitting at their desk across the country and they can open the scan and know exactly what we're talking about. We can review it on the phone together. Uh, we can also add what are called matter tags to the scan, which are basically little points, virtual tags on the scan, where if you open that tag, then we'll have additional information inside of that tag about the loss, maybe the loss description, maybe some scope details about measurements of um, quantities of things that need to be repaired and just making it so easy and seamless to um, speed up that process of uh, scope approval and getting the claim rolling so that our customers are helped faster, we get the loss completed faster, and everyone's happy in the long run. I definitely think it would be a good investment for adjusters to have, especially CAD adjusters. Uh, the documentation, especially when it comes to large loss, is instrumental, fundamental, I would say, because um, the detail that you get out of the Pro 2 camera, it com nothing compares to it as far as photo documentation. Um, with, for example, doing a fire loss, we did um, a freelance Matterport scan for a fire investigator, and he was just so excited about it because it provided such excellent documentation for his court case that he wanted to present the cause of loss of this fire for. So using the Matterport camera and this virtual walkthrough, he could easily guide the jury from point to point and explain how the fire spread. When we go out and do a scan, then afterward we can order a floor plan um, and there's different styles of floor plans when we order. So there's a basic floor plan that comes in as an underlay, which is just a basic schematic floor plan that you can then import into Xactimate as an underlay and then trace over it in Xactimate to create your sketch in Xactimate and then build your scope from there. Uh, however, there is two types of other sketches that are complete SKXs or ESXs when they come in 
that it's, um, they're called TrueSketch and TrueSketch Plus. TrueSketch is basically a ESX that is complete except for ceiling heights, window dimensions, and door dimensions. So that's a simplified version of the ESX, but still an ESX file that's very easy to import, of course. And then you have the TrueSketch Plus, which is everything completed just as you would sketch it if you were there at the loss, meaning all of the ceiling heights are included and accurate, included any vaulted ceilings, any soffits, cutouts, etc. that can get a little tricky when you're trying to sketch on site. And then also um, all of the window me measurements are accurate and the door measurements are accurate as well. Titan Restoration is servicing the valley 24-7, so anytime, anywhere you have an emergency, fire, flood, mold, you can give us a call at 480-649-5050. To find more information about Titan Restoration, you can visit our website at www.titan911.com. My name's Kylie and I work for Titan Restoration in Mesa, Arizona. This is the Matterport camera. This is the Pro 2 camera. So this piece of equipment is the top of the line camera at Matterport, which is a software and a hardware company. Um, as you can see on the camera here, there's three different cameras actually in one. So there's a camera that looks up vertically, one that looks ahead, and one that looks down. And in this rotation, uh, that I'll show you in just a second, of the camera, it'll stop six times. The rotation takes a total of about 18 to 20 seconds to rotate one time fully. And every time it stops, it takes a series of images and um, collects data through infrared sensors. So after uh, the rotation is done, then you'll start to see the uh, what we just took on the camera start to pop up on your screen, populate as a top-down view floor plan of the house. So um, everywhere you put the camera is going to be a point on the map that I'll um, demonstrate in just a second and um, we'll be able to hop from point to point after the scan is uploaded and processed so that you can look 360 in all directions, up, down, and straight ahead. All right, so uh, when I get onto my iPad, all of the, uh, it's all controlled off of your iPad or your iPhone. Uh, you download the Matterport Capture app, and let's pull that up here. So this is what you'll see when you come into the screen. So I already added a new job, and it's gonna start out with a screen that just looks black because we haven't taken any scans yet. So once I um, have my uh, iPad connected to the camera, which emits its own Wi-Fi signal to pick up, on that, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and press uh, the, the rotate button for a 3D scan. And since the lenses are that way, I'm just gonna walk around behind the camera so that it's not getting me in the scan. All right, and that was it. That was one rotation for the camera. Uh, so in just a second, you'll start to see the image of what we just took start to come up on the map here. So you can start to see this is where we place the camera where it says number one, that little blue dot there. And then um, you can start to see into this hallway, into the kitchen, and of course the entry here. So when I click on that point... You can see me. You can see you <laughs> and everything else. 360. So let's keep going with that. Let's get back to our screen here. So then the recommended uh, distance between placing the camera to the next point is going to be five to eight feet. Uh, it could be more if you have an area with no contents. It could be less if you're working in a really tight area that yeah, you need to place the camera closer together just so you can get make sure to get all the data, all the area in the room that you want to see. So. Um, Again, one more point with the height of the camera. As you can see, it's pretty low. It's about four, four and a half feet right now. 
which for restoration environment is recommended because everything that you're seeing in a restoration environment is usually towards the ground. When you have floods, flood cuts going on, uh, materials removed close to the ground, that's why we kind of keep it on a lower level rather than in a realty situation, you would be putting it more at an eye level height. So we're gonna continue on into the kitchen here. I'm gonna move the camera about that much, about again, about five to eight feet and we'll do another rotation. So if you don't have room to walk behind the camera, I'd recommend just hiding around a corner, hiding around somewhere where the camera can't pick you up. Uh, the reason for that is obviously you don't wanna see yourself in every single shot, uh, but beyond that, the camera doesn't really like when things move around after the scan has already been started because it needs to recognize itself from where it was before and the environment it was in before to where it's going. And this is actually giving me a no alignment error because I think our cameraman moved. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so I am gonna try this again, um, going down this hallway here and see if maybe you can stand here and I can go around the corner in the sure. hall there. All right, so I'm gonna place this directly inside the doorway here. Uh, when you're coming in and out of doorways, another tip is to go uh, just before the doorway and just after the doorway. So in doorway situations, you will be closer than five to eight feet, but that's because you're going into a different room, the camera's starting to pick up on different areas, and it just stitches better when the scan processes, when it's going into another room. Um, but you don't want to place it directly in the door jam area. Place it right outside and then again right at, on the other side of the doorway. So let's try another scan here. Just going to stand off to the side while it does its rotation. All right. Okay, so we just entered our bedroom. And as you can see, we have a large window in the corner of the room. Um, in this particular situation, the light is okay. It's actually making a really nice ambient light inside the room. Uh, normally it's recommended that you close the blinds, the curtains, and just use artificial light for reasoning that if the light coming through that window were much brighter, if it were casting a bright shadow, for example, across the floor, since the camera emits an infrared beam to gather data, um, the camera gets confused when it starts hitting natural sunlight. It gets the infrared beam hits the sunlight and the particles of light get mixed together to where it gets confused and it won't pick up that data. So if that were a brighter light, I would normally go close those curtains, making sure that I have enough ambient light between the fan light and the lamps in the corner um, just to make sure that we have enough light to still take the scan, but that it's not interfering. Again, in this situation, I'm not gonna bother with closing the blinds just because it's making a nice bright ambient light. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into the bathroom now. And I would take a scan normally right outside the bathroom door. And then as I'm coming into the bathroom, as you can see, there's this large mirror right before me. So another challenge with Matterport or maybe just one of its nuances is that the camera doesn't like mirrors. Again, with the camera trying to recognize in its software how it's written um, from being where it was before to where it's going, if it's, the camera starts seeing itself in a mirror, it's gonna act like the mirror is a window. Where, or it's a, where it's a continuation of the room rather than a wall with a mirror on it. So what I'm gonna do, as soon as I start to see the mirror come up on my scan on the wall, I'm gonna go into my capture app and let's say this little piece has a mirror on it. There's a little feature at the bottom here where I can, I, I can start to mark features. So there is a mirror icon and a window icon. Again, with windows being uh, letting in bright sunlight, you may wanna use that one to 
um, just basically create a block in your scan. So when you use these features, for example, this mirror, I'm going to take my finger and just click that and drag it to where the mirror is. And it gives you a little direction arrow, arrow whether it's pointing to the mirror or pointing away um, into the room. So basically this says, ignore this area on the wall so that when I'm going into the room that the camera knows to ignore the area of the mirror so that it's the data isn't getting confused when I take this scan. Otherwise, when you go into a bathroom with a huge mirror like this, you're probably going to get one of those no alignment errors. So make sure you always are marking your mirrors early and often. Okay, so now I'm going to make my way down the hallway to the bedrooms. Uh, but you've noticed I've opened this closet door about 45 to halfway, uh, 45 degrees. The reason for that is because we wanna see still inside the closet, but also see beyond the closet. And as you can tell in this hallway, it's a little bit narrow. So um, I'm probably gonna move in my tripod legs just a little bit so I can get by. I can fit it maybe in some smaller spaces. Uh, but this way I can put the camera kind of half and half between the hallway and the door of the closet. So this way, my lens is still getting inside the closet and it's also getting the data down the hallway. So that's just a little quick, easy tip so that you're not having to take so many scans in a smaller area. If you keep your doors at a 45 degree angle, you'll be able to see on both sides of the door still, but not have to take two separate scans on either side of the door. I'm gonna go hide in a bedroom while this is rotating. Okay, so now let's go into a smaller space like one of these bathrooms. It's a guest bathroom. It's a pretty tight space. So when I go in, I'm going to place the camera again just directly inside the doorway there, about eight inches to a foot beyond the door jamb. And I'll go ahead and start a scan. All right, now that that's done, I'm actually probably going to take two to three more scans in this area. I know it's really tight space and my, um, my points on the floor plan are gonna be really close together, but I'm still gonna take that many uh, just because of the blind spot of the camera. Um, there is an area directly below and above the tripod where the lens is, it's just kind of a dead space where the lens is not going to pick up the data below and above. So that's just something to think about when you're operating in tight spaces. If you're really wanting to see what's going on along the floor um, or um, you know, between let's say these little tiny areas of contents or be between the toilet and the shower there, I'm going to be required to take a few more scans just to make sure I gather all of that data and that it's visible in the final product. So I'm just gonna move it a couple feet over and then take another scan. So let's go back to the kitchen for just a second. Let's make an example where there has been a water loss in the kitchen. Let's say a pipe underneath the sink has been dripping, it flooded, and uh, the cabinets are now damaged. So what I'm going to do before I start my scan as part of the scan prep is go and open maybe all of the cabinet doors, all of the cabinets that were affected so that I'm also getting the damage of uh, what's inside and beyond. So actually, ironically, there's, you can see a little bit of water damage on this wall inside the cabinet here. So what I'm going to do with my tripod, just gonna loosen the legs here and we're gonna take this all the way down to the floor. And this is as low as the tripod gets. So a couple feet off the ground, 
uh, by adjusting the height, it's going to just allow the camera again to get inside these smaller areas, make sure that we have all of the water damage recorded. Um, all of maybe if there were some mold growth in there, we'd be able to see that as well without having to take a lot of photos. So I'll place that there and we'll start another one. All right. And the same thing goes with upper cabinets. Or if you're working in contents and there's a lot of things that need to be packed out, especially inside these cabinets, I am going to, let's extend both legs of my tripod. And this tripod I really like because it's a steel frame. So it holds up to just about whatever I throw at it especially in a fire situation. So again, beforehand, I would go through and open all of these cabinets, if, especially if I'm wanting to take um, documentation for contents. Open every single cabinet. We can even open some drawers here. Maybe do every other so we can kind of see what's going on and then you can do another scan with the other drawers open. It, a little bit of movement isn't gonna affect the camera. It's just if a lot of people or pets are coming in and out of the scan, then you tend to have misalignments. Anything in the scan that's really different from what it just took, then you're gonna probably get some misalignment errors. So I'll do another one here. All right, and that way you can actually get a better um, idea if you're doing a, a quote for contents. You can give this if you have a third party company as a contractor, um, send this out to your subcontractors, send it to the adjuster, send it to whoever you want. You can send it to the customer so they can have a record of it. Um, it's also great for if um, you're assessing a home for value um, if you're evaluating a house and um, evaluating coverage, for example, um, if you have a home where there's only one person on the insurance policy, but they have five other people living there or might need to be insured for a few more contents. So um, also good for that. All right, so now we've moved on to the living room, I'm about to scan, but I wanted to just mention one thing since we're uh, taking a scan of an entire house today. That would be a lot of sketching normally um, that you'd have to spend a lot of time on, maybe a couple hours on site, taking pictures of the whole house, uh, taking record of contents, uh, but with the Matterport camera, you can actually order a floor plan from the scan and it's accurate to, they say, one to 2%. So actually more accurate than humans when <laughs> you measure. So when we take the Matterport scan after it's processed, it's um, a very, very small fee to order a floor plan that can then be uploaded into Xactimate as an underlay and then you can trace over that in Xactimate to gain your floor plan. There is another option for a completed ESX file, or it's actually an SKX file, um, that comes from Matterport called TrueSketch or TrueSketch Plus. The difference between TrueSketch and TrueSketch Plus is one, you are going to order it. It's a little bit less of a fee than the TrueSketch Plus, but you basically gives you um, default ceiling heights, default window heights, and door heights. So for this particular home, because it does have a little bit of a vaulted ceiling in the middle, um, I may consider ordering a True Sketch Plus, which the True Sketch Plus is going to come back with all of the ceiling measurements accurate, including vaults, including soffits, and also um, includes all of your correct window sizes and door sizes as well. Yeah, if you're going to be wanting window measurements added, I would probably suggest that in preparing your space, 
you move drapes like this so that we can see a little bit better what kind of windows we're working with and the sizes. So all things to consider when you're setting up for your scan um, so that you're not having to move anything after the fact and you're not having to retake scans because of misalignments if you do move something. All right, so we have our camera all set up in a new environment here. Um, but before we start the scan, what you wanna do is go through the house anywhere you're going to be scanning and prepare the space. And what I mean by prepare the space is you're going to go through, turn on any artificial lights, any overhead lights, maybe you turn on some lamps for extra lighting. Um, you're going to want to close the curtains just so we don't get any of that outside harsh light coming in to disturb our scan. Um, I'm also going to go through and open any doors for where I'm going or close doors for spaces that I'm not going into. And then also go ahead and put your doors at maybe about a 45 degree angle or so, so that you're able to see on both sides of the door, but still go into the space. So that's important because the less you disturb your scan environment, the less potential you have for errors and other misalignments. Okay, so we're in the bedroom here. I'm gonna close this door just a little bit. I'm gonna open this closet door again at about 45 degree angle so I can still see this area between the doors. I'm gonna turn on a few extra lights in here because it's a little bit dark. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on some lamps. Turn on this lamp in the corner here. And voila. Without having too much ambient light coming from the window, we still have enough light to accurately depict what's in the scan. And for more information about the Matterport system, matterport.com. For much more information about becoming a successful property or auto claims IA, including many more videos, free tutorials and webinars, the best gear and software for claims and industry news and IA weather reports, head on over to adjustertv.com. And as always, thank you so much for watching and have a great storm.